how this can be transmitted from peer to peer. So this is called social contagion. In one study explicitly demonstrated, or one study explicitly demonstrated how nocebos can be transmitted from peer to peer. In this study, a single member of a group of subjects was falsely informed of the risk of altitude headache prior to a relatively low altitude hike, so below the threshold which would require or cause altitude sickness or altitude headache, but they were told that the hike could do that. Before the ascent, this information was spontaneously shared with some, but not all participants. Those exposed to the negative information constituting a nocebo group reported a much higher rate of headache than those who had not been exposed to this information. Power of suggestion. The media and lay press have also been recognized for their role in disseminating sociogenic illness. For example, several symptom outbreaks initially attributed to environmental sources, including uh, infrasound uh, from wind turbines, so sub-audible sound waves from generated from wind turbines, uh, electromagnetic field emissions from power lines, and aerial spraying of pesticides were later believed to be psychogenically mediated. In these specific cases, epidemiologists subsequently observed that the frequency of complaints tended to increase after significant media coverage with density of symptom reporting geographically clustering in regions receiving the most negative press. So if there's a bunch of stories about the de detrimental effects of wind turbines and everything else, people that are receiving those media reports all of a sudden have an exponential increase in complaints related to those exact scenarios. So when we look at stuff like post-concussion syndrome and these online support groups where everyone goes and joins these groups and just continually propagates their symptoms forward, all of a sudden now everyone in that group is going to have a hard time getting better because those are going to manifest within them as well. The media reports on CTE has so many people concerned about the detrimental or possible detrimental effects of having even a single concussion, which obviously none of these NFL players have had a single concussion. There's going to be frequent or numerous concussions. And even then, there's so much information that we don't know about this. We don't know if the actual pathology is the cause of any of the symptoms that people are reporting in life. And we don't know if those symptoms are related to concussions or brain injury of any kind. Those symptoms could be related to other things, potentially some nocebo-related things.